In 1880, Jersey farmer Hugh Delahaye came upon a potato plant which had produced kidney-shaped potatoes with a paper-thin skin that once cooked gave off a fantastic flavour. Those humble beginnings were responsible for our beloved Jersey Royal. I would like to show you what goes into producing this famous vegetable and how many of the core practices have remained the same over the last 130 years. Every potato season actually begins its cycle the previous year with the digging of the seed. Very often it starts with hand lifting until the seed is set enough to dig without disturbing their skins. However, the majority will be dug using modified harvesters. As well as removing potatoes considered too small, it's a good opportunity to make sure only healthy tubers reach the shed. They are all carefully tipped by hand into potato seed trays, which are stacked to allow plenty of ventilation for the summer months in one of the company's many storage sheds. Whether it be here early morning on the beach under Gory Castle in the east of the island or the western extremities at La Poulance, the next annual field maintenance task requires the gathering and spreading of seaweed on a selection of the farm's fields. The method this farm uses is to tip it in heaps on the fields and then spread those with a combination of tractor buck rake and by hand. Also in the autumn months is the massive task of what we know as standing the seed potatoes. This is where each one of those trays you saw being stored before will be tipped onto a table where the potatoes will have their shoots which have started to grow, removed then stacked tightly together, eyes facing upwards and in accordance with their side grade from one to five. As always with a task of this nature, the farm expects a minimum standard, hence the constant presence of a quality control inspector who you can see here checking finished stood trays. As you would expect this also is another opportunity to remove any seed which falls below the required criterion. Once the standards pallet has been counted it then has to be sorted into similar sizes and the careful task of restacking approximately one and a half million trays undertaken. As well as forced ventilation, lights are used to control the length of shoots, which would otherwise grow too long searching for any natural light. They are on for time periods in any one day, as well as having their physical position moved twice a week. Between the last weeks of October and first weeks of December, the vast majority of the indoor glass or polytunnels will be planted to be ready around the following March. January is when the majority of the steep early slopes we call coatees will be planted. This one is perhaps the most renowned as it faces a magnificent castle. Indeed our company logo features this scene. These fields are so steep they are all work using a winch and cable. Here the planting plough buries some precisely placed seed. Here's two guys making a slot for the plastic. The staff laying these 30 meter wide perforated plastic sheets make it look considerably easier than it is in reality. The aim is to be able to lay it in such a way that the finished product looks like a sheet of glass. Here we see one of the first fields being planted without having to use winch and cable. The vast majority of fields will have their V-shaped furrows formed to plant the potatoes into made using one of these lightweight, hydraulically driven, rubber tracked crawlers. The planted rows are covered over with soil using these specifically designed dish frames. These clips are taken from the crawler mid-February and are bizarre because snow flurries while planting royals are extremely rare. Here is the same field and time of year 
but two years later. What a difference a day makes. This machine makes the slots once out of the coatees. It took many years of experimentation to get them to stay open, especially in dry conditions. Now we see a crew laying plastic behind the slotter. In this case they are reusing plastic saved from the previous season. I deeply regret not having any footage of the efforts made to maintain these 13 meter wide sheets on the growing crop as the wind will do its best to find a way between the polythene and ground, particularly on exposed fields. When conditions are right, the next task will be to remove the plastic. Good practice is to be able to remove it with as little contact as possible to the potato stalks. Once it has had a chance to dry, it will be wound up and wrapped. Depending on its condition, it will either be shipped back to a manufacturer and recycled, or safe to be used again. Here we see what we call reworking the potatoes. This machine is passed through, there's some tines at the front loosening up the soil, and the discs spread the soil around the base of the plant. Apart from uh, stopping greening, it's just generally regarded as good husbandry. Here is a speeded up example of a growing crop. In this case, one of the roughly 35% exported without the use of plastic. Lifting of the outdoor crop begins in April. This particular coatee has been harvested using the fork. Here is that coat here you saw being planted earlier. The cable now pulls an implement which effectively ploughs the potatoes out. The image from the camera does not reflect just how steep the slope is in reality. I can tell you from personal experience how exhausting working on a gradient like this can be. As April progresses it's time to move out of the coatees. At this time the vast majority will still be lifted by hand. The machine of choice at this moment is the side delivery. Thankfully, as the season moves on, the farm is able to resort to the very latest modern high-tech machinery. These machines have been modified and then painstakingly adjusted so as to be able to dig this unique potato in the gentlest way possible. Each digging team has a staff member whose sole job is to constantly take samples to check they are being dug without damage and advise accordingly. In the last few years the farm has changed its preference of single row harvesters from Samro to Grimm. <laughs>